Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal has busied himself in talks with stakeholders regarding national economic issues. Also in this edition of Kantipu News, we have updates about protest against the ban of video sharing platform TikTok in Nepal, the ongoing Israel-Hamas conflict and the curated theme of the World Cup announced by the International Cricket Council. Good evening, I'm Sarah Sapsanamo. Let's begin with the top stories of the hour. Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal identifies need for improvements in policies and management of medical education, commits of expanding medical education to all provinces. Task force formed under the coordination of former Chief Secretary Podol to prepare a home administration improvement work plan. Three-month deadline given to turn in report. At least 12 people killed in Israeli airstrike in the Indonesian hospital in northern Gaza. About 700 people still inside the hospital, including medical teams and wounded people. And Indian players dominated the list of players announced for the ICC World Cup 2023 playing 11. Skipper of world champions Australia, Pat Cummins, does not make it in the list. Israeli Defense Forces IDF has confirmed that Nepali citizen Bipin Josie of Kanchanpur is among those held hostage by Hamas militants. The Nepalese embassy in Israel, quoting the IDF, has said that Josie is among those held hostage by the Hamas militants. Hamas held more than 200 people hostage during the attack in Israel's Kibbutz Alumim on 7th of October. The Nepalese embassy in Israel has further added that they do not have the latest update regarding Josie's condition. Spokesperson of IDF Daniel Hagari said that efforts are underway to ensure safe release of all the hostages held by Hamas. IDF has said that it has been confirmed through the CCTV footages that the hostages are being held at hospitals in Gaza. Meanwhile, Nepal's senior foreign ministry official has said that Nepali ambassador to Israel Kanta Rijal and Nepali ambassador to Qatar Naresh Bikram Dahal Takal, in fact, were instructed to take up the matter of Josie's safe release with the Israeli and Qatari officials. Rijal met with Israeli President Isaac Herzog and other senior officials and took up the matter, but there has been no progress. According to the Nepalese embassy in Qatar, Takal also met with senior Qatari officials on two occasions and sought their help in releasing Josie. However, the Qatari officials have yet to respond. Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal identified the need for improvements in policies and management of medical education in the country. Addressing the 12th meeting of the Medical Education Commission, Premier Dahal said that all stakeholders had to unite for improvement in the medical education sector. In addition to increasing human resource in the health sector, Prime Minister Dahal added that it was mandatory to follow the basic guidelines for quality education. He also shared the government commitment to expand medical education to all provinces and ensure access to health services for everyone. Premier Dahal has begun discussions to address the country's economic issues. The Prime Minister has held talks with the National Planning Commission, Ministry of Finance and the high-ranking officials of Nepal Rashtra Bank and the Office of the Prime Minister and Council of Ministers. The Premier is to hold talks with the private sector and economists tomorrow and day after tomorrow. According to the Office of the Prime Minister, discussions are being held regarding the government efforts to revive the economy. Business persons have been saying that the economy is struggling because of contrasting monetary and fiscal policies. It has been learned that the Prime Minister is also to hold talks regarding the problems created by cooperatives. Office of the Prime Minister has said that a concrete decision is to be taken after holding talks with all stakeholders. The Ministry of Home Affairs has formed a study committee led by former Chief Secretary Lila Mani Podil to make effective its work execution. Organizing a press meet today, Deputy Prime Minister and Home Minister Naren Kazi stressed announced the formation of the study committee. The committee has a tenure of three months, with Lila Mani Podil serving as the coordinator. Minister Shrestha informed that the committee will provide a comprehensive review of Nepal Police, Armed Police Force, Prison Management, Department of Immigration, Disaster Minimization and Management and the National Identity Card System. Subgroups have been formed to provide suggestions to improve seven key agencies under the Home Ministry. Responsibility has been given to former IGP Prakash Aryal for the study of Nepal Police. Former IGP Singh Bahadur Shrestha has been handed the responsibility for APF study 
former Secretary Sharad Chandra Podal for Immigration Study and former Secretary Lakshmi Prasad Dhaka for Prison Management Study. Ruling Party Nepali Congress has decided to send volunteers to build temporary shelters for the earthquake victims in Jazar Court and Rukum West. The office bearers meeting for Nepali Congress held this morning decided to give priority to construct temporary shelters for families with senior citizens and children. The meeting also decided to extend additional help in the earthquake affected region. Discussions regarding the country's economy were also held at the office bearers meeting. Finance Minister and Nepali Congress spokesperson Prakash Sharan Mahat claimed that the country's economic indicators were improving. Contemporary political issues were also discussed during this morning's meeting. Users of video sharing platform TikTok have staged a protest in Kathmandu against the government decision to ban the social media platform in Nepal. Youths held a protest rally chanting slogans from Maiti Ghar Mandala to Baneshwar. Those attending the protest have demanded withdrawal of the government decision to ban TikTok in Nepal. They said that the government should have, should have regulated social media platforms and not imposed control on them. Meanwhile, hearings on the 10 writs filed against the government decision to ban TikTok were not held today. Hearing in the single bench of Justice Kumar Chudal has been postponed for tomorrow. Citing disruption to social harmony, the government had decided to ban TikTok in Nepal on the 13th of November. It's time now for our segment Public Pulse where you text us with your opinion. The question is what should be done to prevent from the clutches of human traffickers? Your options are A, general awareness, B, tough actions and C, better employment back home. Is on, type N-E-W-S, select your option A, B or C and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. The four-day festival of Chhat came to a conclusion this morning as devotees worshipped the rising sun. Devotees assembled at the river banks and in many places including Mithilanchal, they offered special prayers to the rising sun with their bodies dipped in water to conclude the four-day festival this morning. Chhat festival also came to a conclusion in Kathmandu Valley as the sunrise was recorded at 6.28 a.m. A huge throng of Chhat devotees and revelers observed the conclusion of the festival with much fanfare and enthusiasm. On the third and the main day of the festival yesterday, devotees had offered prayers to the setting sun. It is believed that fasting during the Chhat festival ushers in good health and prosperity to the family. Chhat festival, which previously used to be observed only in the Tarai Madhesh region in the southern belt of the country, has gradually gained popularity and is celebrated throughout the country in recent time. Three people have died in a bus accident at Kolbung of Rong Rural Municipality, Ward No. 3 in Ilam. 60-year-old Shanta Maya Tabang of Dhanusha Dha Municipality 9, Dharapani, who was injured in the accident and was undergoing treatment at the BNC Hospital, breathed her last today. Prior to this, 12-year-old Arpan Lama had died on the spot, while 35-year-old Manwati Lama died yesterday evening. The bus, which was returning after an excursion to Kanyam of Ilam, had plunged 300 meters from the road. 33 injured in the accident are the local residents of Dharapani. Meanwhile, 22 others were injured in another vehicular accident in Rukum earlier this morning. The four-wheeler traveling from Jaurjahari municipality to headquarters Musikot had met with the accident at Kalegao Bridge. Seven with serious injuries have been taken to Nepal Ganj for treatment, while others are undergoing treatment at Jaurjahari Hospital. A fire in a poultry farm has damaged the house of Kishore Dumirai in Kotang's Baksila of Kapilashgari Rural Municipality 4. The fire destroyed Kishore's three-story house along with two tolas of gold, four tolas of silver, food grains and clothes. District Police Office Kotang has estimated the damages caused by the fire at 1.5 million rupees. Kishore's niece Sarita Tamang was injured while she was trying to escape the fire. The fire was put out at around 2 a.m. this morning with the help of Area Police Office Baksila. Construction works of a coal store have begun in Chautara Sangachok Gadi, municipality of Sindhu Palchok for storage of agricultural producers. The coal storage facility is being constructed at 
Kuwinde of Chautara at an investment of 25 million rupees in conditional aid from the federal government after four years of the building of walls. According to Chautara municipality, the total cold storage facility is being built with a total investment of 60 million rupees with 35 million in the second phase. The local farmers are currently compelled to pay high prices for storage of the producers in Kavre and Kathmandu. Harvesting season of kiwi planted by farmers in Tolokha has begun. The period between the second week of November through to mid of December is the harvesting period of kiwi. Traders reach the kiwi gardens of the farmers to purchase kiwi. Many farmers harvest kiwi and store in cold storage facilities. Farmers have said that despite an increase in production this season, low market price has led to storage of kiwi. Green, red and golden kiwi are planted in Dolakha district. According to the Kiwi Zone program, the fruit is planted over 800 hectares of land in Dolakha. 8,000 metric tons of kiwi is produced each year in the district. Now, works of the Tamor Lift Drinking Water Project have begun in Chauthar Jorpati Rural Municipality in Dhankuta. Following contract agreement, works of the multi-year project have begun with an investment of 180 million rupees from the Federal Water Supply and Sewerage Management Project. Works related to tank and office building are underway in Chulachuli, Solti and Murki Ahal, while pipeline is being expanded in Chulachuli, Kajiman, Simbua and Telia. The water lifted from the confluence of Tamo River will be taken to the reservoir, which is under construction at Chulachuli and Soti Ahal. Around 6,000 local residents of Chathar Jorpati Rural Municipality Ward No. 3, 4 and 5 are to benefit from the project. Foreign visitors have reached the Rolwaling Valley as a major tourist destination of Dolaka in huge numbers. According to Gauri Shankar Conservation Area, around 1,000 foreign tourists reached the Rolwaling area popular for trekking in two months of this year. More than 300 foreigners have left for the Mount Everest from Tasilapcha this year. Tourists leave for the Mount Everest after a seven-day trek from Tasilapcha. Meanwhile, more than 1,200 domestic tourists have reached the Rolwaling region this year. Domestic tourists mainly visit the Chorulpa Glacial Lake and Dudkunda. According to the local hotels, several tourists were provided tents as the hotels in Bathing and Nagao were not able to accommodate all the visitors. A female tiger has been found dead at the Hariyali community forest in the banks of Rapti River in Bharatpur Metropolis, Ward No. 27, Megholi of Chitwan. According to Chitwan National Park, the dead tiger was of around seven years of age. Considering the wounds on the body of the female tiger, death might have been caused because of a fight between two tigers. Based on a recent survey, there are a total of 355 tigers in Nepal, with 128 of them in and around the Chitwan National Park. At least 12 people have died in Israeli airstrike in the Indonesian hospital in northern Gaza. About 700 people are still inside the hospital, including medical teams and wounded people. After the strike, Israeli tanks reportedly were seen moving into the area. Israel says it's attacking terrorists and terrorist infrastructure in the Gaza Strip. The Hamas-run health ministry in Gaza has said 13,000 people have now been killed in the territory since Israel began its campaign against Hamas. Elsewhere in southern Gaza, 15 people were killed, including children and women, after homes were bombarded near Abu Yusuf Al-Najjar Hospital in Rafah. Dozens more were injured. Meanwhile, 20 premature babies who left Al Shifa Hospital in the northern Gaza Strip at the weekend have reached Egypt as they were evacuated from the Al Shifa Hospital in the northern Gaza Strip. In total, 31 babies were moved from the hospital this weekend. It is not known if or when the other three will move to Egypt. The Hamas run health ministry in Gaza has said there are still 260 wounded people inside Al Shifa and that one person is dying every day. Two people were killed today after Russian forces shelled a parking lot in the southern Ukrainian city of Kherson. Regional prosecutors opened a war crimes investigation into the artillery strike, which injured one other person. Kherson governor Alexander Prokudin said the two were dead, two dead were drivers for a private transport business. Video footage posted by officials showed firefighters dousing cars that had been blasted apart. 
is all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.